every now and then I get to review one of these trailers and it feels like I'm just getting reacquainted with an old friend. That's how this one hits me. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd with Bish's RV actually down here on Coachman's campus today getting, like I said, reacquainted with my old friend the 292 BHDS bunkhouse and that means, the DS means deep slide, not double slide because uh, Freedom Express was really the lightweight uh, travel trailer brand that that showed that like historically lightweight travel trailers had these small shallow little slides if any slide and they showed that you can make a full size rv that weighs a little bit less but you know you got to do it a little bit differently you got to do things like use more lamination and you have to do things like use more materials like asdel to help keep the weight in check and that's what you're getting here they're even kind of rare in the world lightweights with an extra tall ceiling they're uh carpetless they're ventless flooring so fantastic if you've got uh messy pants husbands like myself or if if you've got you know dogs or kids that like to drop skittles and legos down those things i definitely would have lost a lego head or two um you know when i was a kid uh in a camper with floor events but you know uh, you just you, you, you hakuna matata you work with it anyway um <laughs> this model right here gives us a private rear sleeping space three private rear bunks and a, a true queen bedroom privatized up front um, and it does it all with one slide in the living room to give you that rainy day kind of sanity space or if everybody's kind of, you know, eating breakfast, eating dinner, you got room for all that. This one, though, I think is a, a fantastic floor plan for really spending a lot of time outside with the family because the awning coverage on this is fantastic. And as you can see back there, you've got that big camp kitchen uh, that has a, a big full flip up like overhead door that almost acts like an extension of the awning space because as you're seeing, there is a lot of coverage over here. Now it's not gonna be the perfect one for everybody. Like it, it doesn't have the most bestest uh, direct viewing theater seat entertainment system you've ever seen in your life. Not every RV does every single thing. We've got other rigs that do that. But maybe if you're like, I don't go camping just to watch TV. I go camping and kind of be with my family, but I wanna be like, kids, go to your room. This might be the perfect fit for you and your family right here. Now, th there's nothing new and original about the layout of this RV. This is about actually as classic and throwback as slide-out floor plans get. The difference here, there's a bunch of little details in the execution that I would I'd really encourage you to hang out and, and, and learn about this stuff. Like, first of all, the fact that uh, we've got that taller ceiling. Average RV has a six-and-a-half-foot sidewall. Uh, some of them have a vaulted ceiling, some do not. Now, this has a vaulted roof, but it has a linear interior ceiling measuring six foot nine all the way across. It has a taller sidewall. So it's a actually genuinely taller RV. Um, the taller sidewall will determine the fact that this allows for a taller slide, taller bunks, taller shower, more storage in the overhead cabinets. Um, I, I prefer a 6.9 interior versus a 6.5 with a vault. I can get by with a vaulted ceiling. This would be my kind of nerd preferred way to go. Kind of like the way that they're accomplishing their carpetless floor flush slide over here. Now, keep in mind, floor flush slide, not truly floor flush, but it does jump down a little bit, so it's not a major toe kick. But the flooring matches, and you might notice, very pet friendly with no sort of heat vents in the floor or uh, anything like that. Now, what we're looking at here is a trifold sleeper sofa. Um, there is a swaption uh, if you really wanted it for a theater seat, but you're going to see this is, uh, I've often referred to things like this as a neck wrecker entertainment center. This is not an ideal TV viewing uh, kind of camper. Notice though, we got big windows all the way around and you'll see later uh, blackout draw shades, uh, roller shades on these as opposed to the, uh, the pleated cloth blinds. That's another one of the Liberty Edition upgrades. Our uh, dinette table's got an elliptical base, and that is a true U-dinette, which uh, there a lot of things in the RV industry are called a U-dinette, and not everybody realizes they're different. That is a true, like, you can get four people around it. There's enough knee and leg room for that. Um, and the uh, it folds down to a bigger sleeper, and they do a great job of giving you easy storage all the way around. Again, taller ceiling, taller cabinets. That also allows for more storage. But even down here, uh, not, not even where it's taller, even this traditional looking kitchen arrangement offers more storage. And it's not because it's wider necessarily or, or anything special like that. It's deeper. Are you noticing my backpack hanging out behind a stovetop? 
that's not possible in almost any RV. So back here where they have like the little knife holder slots, usually that little strip is all you have behind the stovetop. They brought everything forward. Now, notice they brought the fixtures forward so that if you need some kind of clutter containment arrangement system back there behind your sink, behind your stovetop, or toaster oven, something like that, you have room for it. By the way, you do have uh, plugs up here under the overhead cabinet. I would like them to be down a little lower, but a laminated sidewall RV that's only an inch and a half thick laminated wall doesn't really allow for that. Although as deep as this is, I wouldn't be opposed to like a pop-up power tower back there. What's your two cents on that? Uh, Liberty Edition will also swap out the sealed edge thermal foil counters in the kitchen for a uh, solid surface. Although everything else like in the bathroom, over there in the dining table, that will still be a sealed edge thermal foil, which there's nothing wrong with that. That doesn't bother me whatsoever either. Uh, working our way back here, quick note. Today, we are looking at the gas electric two-way refrigerator uh, swaption. Uh, it's eight cubic foot. The standard default in this would be a 10.7 cubic foot, 12 volt compressor fridge. And the bathroom is one of those areas where as a taller person, I do appreciate the, uh, the taller ceiling. I am a little over six foot. And if you notice, I can cleanly stand up there without my head being in the skylight any, any which way, every which way but loose. I'm good to go here. Also, in the Liberty Edition, uh, this is the only series of Freedom Express where you will see it outfitted with the big XL fan here in the bathroom. Everything else will have the little 4-inch fart fan. Here they're using the rain sensor uh, Fajita Friday Fume Fighter, which is uh, the technical term, mind you. Um... It's not. It's not true. I made that up. Anyway, uh, the, the little countertop cutaway over here is really handy because if you notice, it's a little tight on the right-hand elbow side, but I'm also sitting directly upright. I think a lot of the times, if you're using the bathroom as a right-handed person, you will tend to lean left to do your business um, when you're done anyway. And uh, a left-handed person just already has enough uh, elbow room over here. So, you might be a person of larger stature where this doesn't work, but overall, I do think it's okay. And that is a porcelain foot flush and nice little spot for like a little Walmart bag. You know, you know, the, the wastebasket, like the wastebaskets that are, that a Walmart bag fits in. That would go perfectly under that. Not enough RVs leave a wastebasket space under the sink. I think that's a, uh, an all too often missed quality myself. Now working our way back here again, we have a separate room in the back for just the bunks, but I actually want to start all the way down here where you've got a little spot where you can keep the kids, uh, you know, crocs and shoes and everything else, flip flops, uh, all that kind of stuff. Over here in the left, I'm not a big fan of open face storage. They do have some pretty aggressive lippage on them, though, depending on what you want to do. But when you get up in here, up in here, this, this bunk room is fantastic. First of all, a couple handy USB plugs to help keep the uh, devices charged up. And we'll see some more power outlets in a second. But all of these windows open for airflow. Now, these side windows, those have snap-on blackout shades. I'll show you a sample of that in a second. The rear windows have the roller shades. You can see that that knob there where you can, you know, pull that sucker down. There's those extra outlets and TV hookups out over that rear uh, cabinet I was telling you about. But again, same thing over here. They made it as symmetrical as they could, but this is a triple bunk. And there's one of those blackout shades. Now, these two beds over here are normal single bunk size. The one on the left-hand side of the RV is a little bit larger. And sometimes people wonder, well, you know, why they do that? Because this is over the camp kitchen. So they had a little extra room. The room is not exactly uh, even symmetrical left to right. So that is kind of something they had to do. Now, what if you want a fourth bed? You don't want that camp kitchen. They make that too. It's called the Freedom Express 29 SE. And once you know it, I've got a video on that sucker. Now that big chunk of storage in the back, look inside here. That is deep. That is deeper than the trouble I get into with my wife. Uh, and that's pretty deep. <laughs> There's some very handy storage space in there. But speaking of storage, we need to get all this cabinetry space opened up. And I feel, after moonwalking, like starting right up top, right about meow. Taller cabinets, they don't have a shelf in them, but that does leave you the opportunity if you want to get like one of those easy wire shelf organizer things you put in there, cool. 
Or if you have like tall pictures or sweet tea, you know, you got some room for something like that. Um, the dinette, again, has full storage below it, and the rear bench has a sliding access door, so you don't have to tear apart everything, and that floating table can get right out of the way whenever you need it. Um, looking forward here, that entertainment system can spin around. We're going to get another look at that in just a minute, but underneath that sink, and that is a big stainless farm sink in these liberties, you have the utensil drawer. It wraps around that sink. It is the best use of space under a sink I've ever seen. And I have to believe Freedom Express has some kind of patent or something on it because I've never seen another manufacturer do it. I've even heard other manufacturers go, yeah, that's pretty cool, but they won't touch it. So I gotta believe there's a reason for it. Whatever the case, I think that is the, one of the best uses of space under a sink I have ever, ever seen. The only nitpick I have with this kitchen, and it's got kind of a little one, but uh, a little more space under that sink area for like a good size wastebasket, wouldn't offend me, wouldn't offend me at all. Liberty Edition here, you're going to get that electric space heat and Tootsie Toaster, and we do have a clutter cut and shoe garage right by the door. Now moving up front, uh, let, me, let me actually sit down and let me, let me acknowledge this. I've already kind of talked about this, but this is not the world's best viewing entertainment center. That TV, you'll see in a second, it can spin a little, but you're actually maybe potentially losing some of the uh, angle on it because of the the boxy construction that is uh I, I almost think i would leave it facing the the, the bedroom most of the time because what you're going to see is the bedroom it actually has a really good viewing angle um i don't know that's my two cents uh every rv is built with different benefits different drawbacks i like to just paint the picture and let you decide i don't i don't like to feel like i don't tell you what's the best or anything now up in here it would normally be a problem if the mattress came right up against the sliding privacy doors, if you wanted a longer mattress. But I said normally. You don't have to worry about that here because that already is a longer True Queen mattress. Not an issue in this one. Up front, you do have that front windshield. That's just part of the whole Liberty thing. You're getting a little peek at my knuckles over here uh, in that, um, oops, sorry, about lost my balance. Got a little uh, dizzy woozy for a second there. Anyway, uh, working our way down, it's dark on dark, and I got a feeling in the 24 generation their decor is going to change. I don't have any details on that I can share quite yet. Um, but you have household and USB outlets on both sides of the bed, which is very cool. And you've got full hanging closet storage on both sides of the bed, like you see right there. What is also really nice is how the uh, overhead um, cabinets... Well, the doors will hold themselves open, which I think is really nice, so that you don't have to constantly do that. There's so many RVs where you got to juggle it open, but that vaulted bed lift system on here, that is very, very cool. And the cabinets, basically, the dresser cabinets below the bed, those are structural, meaning you can sit on them. So if you need some kind of extra seating space or if you're like folding laundry or something, that could be a handy little laundry fold situation, maybe a craft thing you could maybe turn this into some kind of DIY office scrapbook room. I don't know. I'm just kind of reaching for ideas here, but you, you get the point. Um, and the dresser drawers on both sides of the bed open outward, so you don't have to lift the bed up. And all that being said, one other thing I realize as I'm standing here right by the door, our control panel, it just has physical switches. You want to turn the lights off? Fine. You want to turn the lights on? Fine. But what's neat, if you notice, this actually has a hidden version of one control. So if you like to go R2-D2 digital with this stuff, you can do that. I'm getting some game notifications on my phone, apparently. I'm a nerd. Or you can always just go, eh, I, like, I, I prefer low-tech. I, I don't want digital R2-D2. I just want to push a button and make the lights go. <laughs> you can do that, too. Now, what I can always remember on this one is that with the slide closed, you, you ain't getting to the bunk room. There's no question on that. Now, obviously, with the door up here by the bedroom, that's less of a concern. Um, so for a travel sleepover, you're going to have to operate the slide. But uh, the kitchen, obviously readily accessible over here on the campsite of the RV away from the slide out. The question becomes the bathroom. If the bathroom door is closed and the slide is closed, you're not going to be able to get in there, but there's two possible workarounds. And if you appreciate the extra information, like showing you the slides closed and stuff and giving you this extra insights, do me a favor, hit the like button on the video or subscribe if you haven't. Uh, in the meantime, um, workaround number one, if you notice 
The bathroom door doesn't come right up next to the slide. There is a gap there. What that means is if you totally open the bathroom door and somehow tied it in place or bungee strapped it or whatever and secured it so that it stayed open and then closed the slide out, you'd be able to kind of sneak your way through there a little bit. It'd be a little tight, but you could make it happen. Uh, the other thing to remember is this is a rack and pinion slide out. One of the benefits of a rack and pinion slide is that if you... Uh, need to deploy it partially, but not completely. It won't screw the slide up if you do that, provided you're not doing the Randy Savage elbow drop inside that thing. So keep that in mind. By the way, speaking of Randy Savage, remember way back when the world was supposed to end one of those times and two days before Randy Savage ascended the top rope to the heavens, brother? Randy Savage delivered the atomic elbow on the apocalypse, brother. Oh, yeah. Now for towing recommendations, um, this one feels kind of on the cusp of a half ton recommendation. And like, if you look at it, you're like, it's 6,600 pounds empty. You know, that should be half ton towable all day. Yeah, but legally you need to be able to tow the GVW of an RV. And this is approaching 10,000 pounds. And it's got a good chunk of length to it here. Like if I back up a little bit, you can see she's reasonably long. But by the time you have a private true queen bedroom, private bunks, and a super slide, there just is not really any way to build it any smaller than that. That's just kind of the way it's going to go. But if you look down toward the ground, you see that it does have wide stance axles. That will basically make the RV feel and tow like it is a little bit shorter than it truly is. So what I'm getting at is if you're going over more modest terrain and you've got a very capable half ton, this would possibly be a good fit for you if you're going to go cross country through the mountains and, and across the windy plains that's a lot of sidewall wind pushing around a lighter duty vehicle that may not be the best recipe for uh comfort and happiness so there's one minute of uh you know figuring out how this may or may not work for you now up front here of course power tongue jack like the liberties have had for a while these are all power tongue jack all power corner jacks pardon my battery box over here we've got a tongue mounted spare tire i just like you to see that since you won't see it on the bumper battery disconnect switch and that yellow thing right there that is the relay for our tire pressure monitoring system um as we uh back up a little bit one thing i want to point out here that's a little bit different like this is the nose cap on the Liberty Edition Freedoms. And this is the nose cap on the Ultralights. At a glance, they look similar, but watch down uh, near the tongue at that diamond plate as it vanishes in about half a second here. Instead, you see the Liberties have a full nose cap versus a three-quarter, a partial. Um, the, uh, the thing here is this nose cap does actually wrap around the sidewalls. So it's moving this seam right here, instead of being dead on the front of the RV where it's subject to the biggest chunk of uh, wind push and whatnot, it's moving it from an area of high stress to low stress. A lot of motorhome uh, nose caps kind of uh, employ a very similar concept there. So that's just sort of a thing to maybe keep in mind. Now your awning does have lighting, but if you look in front of the awning at the top of the RV, you see a floodlight. If you look beside the entry door, beside the kitchen window, you see another floodlight. Liberties add extra outside lighting so you can see what you're doing. They also upgrade you, like both Liberties and Ultras, like you see the Ultra there in the background, they both have magnetic holdbacks here that are actually, they have their own little magnetic catch that uh, will, will prevent them from falling on you. But Liberties, we do upgrade to a, uh, a, a slam latch or paddle lock kind of thing right here. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll give you an attaboy if you can tell me what the dog's name is, because the dog actually does have a name. I'll also give you another attaboy if you can tell me why the Coachman mascot is a Dalmatian. There's also a reason for that. Now, up front here, all across the nose, I remember to leave it on today, you do have uh, accent lighting up in there. And you see uh, up here, you have that uh, brown box. Well, inside that box is a picnic table that is included with this. And uh, taking a look here at some, not necessarily exactly the same specific, but sample footage, I've pulled one of those out so you can get an idea. It's a, a two foot by four foot picnic table, which isn't the biggest, but it is nice uh, if you happen to be, uh, you know, camping uh, right after sewer hose Sally decides to slather her sewer hose all over the public picnic table, which is a real thing. It's disgusting, it does happen. 
Now the underbelly of this is enclosed. It is forced air heated. There's also a radiant barrier option to add that reflective foil stuff across the roof and down the nose of this, which can help especially extend your summertime hot seasonal camping. Remember, TPMS is factory standard on these. We already kind of talked about the wide stance axles, but zero in in over here on our camp kitchen. This seems to be one of the very few true fully featured full-size camp kitchens even available in the marketplace today most camp kitchens i mean camp kitchens used to be really nicely well appointed like this and it's like every year manufacturers found a way to, to pull five cents out of the stupid things and half the time uh, like what manufacturers are calling a camp kitchen is truly just a mini fridge and maybe some kind of cooker, if that. This has a full real sink with a drain. We have another utensil drawer, plus an additional uh drawer, maybe for utensils over there, whatever works for you. There are just not a lot of them that are fully featured and fully equipped to the extent this one is. Now the uh, RV's long enough, the awning doesn't cover that camp kitchen, but you will see later in the video, I could walk right under that thing, not have any sort of headroom clearance issues. Um, instead of a telescopic removable ladder, which can actually hold more weight than the 250 pound rated ladder that you see on there, um, it is always on though, so you don't have to worry about stowing a ladder somewhere. Now you see that orangey yellow sticker on the rear bumper? First of all, it has a rear bumper. The RV doesn't have a rear hitch though but that's what the sticker's telling us. If you look down, you can actually see some rear brackets. They're prepped and ready. If you do want to slap an accessory hitch on here, you can do that easy peasy and not have to worry about screwing up any sort of factory warranty or any that scary stuff. Unless you decide to, you know, start loading 800 pounds with the motorcycle lift on it. Well, yeah, then you're gonna have a problem. I love how all the hookups are in one spot and they're in the rear corner over here of the RV, which is almost always the closest place to the park hookups for you. I am hoping I left this unlocked. I did not. Stand by. Ah, there we go. All right. So historically, you know, the, the previous iterations of this model, it had a full second rear pass through junk in the trunk storage system. Right now, it's about a two-thirds because you do have a camp kitchen on the other side. And I will tell you, one of the things you're going to want to watch here is the uh, the the lock. Oh, wow. Smoke coming out of my ears. It presses right up against that window. Now, it doesn't seem to hurt it. But what I want to tell you about that, a little uh, you know, cautionary tale from Uncle Josh here. Don't just slam that baggage door up because you might slam that window, and uh, that is gonna suck, ladies and gentlemen. I um, I love the fact that there's a window there, but mm, man, that's that's a little that's a little tricky. I almost wonder if they. Wait a minute. Okay, I need your input. I need your input. They don't put the spare tire on the rear bumper, right? And I talked about the junk in the trunk storage, right? What if, instead of a door on the side that could smash the window, they just put a door on the back under Pete the Coachman Dog, which, um, you know, if you didn't already leave your comment, don't cheat now because I just told you the dog's name. <laughs> now, the super slide over here, that is a rack and pinion slide, not cable, not Schwinn Tech, uh, none of the other things right there. What I want to do, though, is get up uh, a little bit closer here to it. They use a, a really rough textured slide wall on these. And they're not the only ones that do it, but they're one of the few that do it a lot. And it really grabs these slide seals nicely. They're also doing this little T-shaped wiper seal on here because it will it will better grab that and fully wipe it around. You can see how there's double wiper seals plus a bulb seal for either when it's open or closed. There's one on either side of that wall to make sure that when it is fully open or closed, you've got three points of seal contact right there. Now. I get this question all the time. Hey Josh, should I use those uh, slide support jack things? No. No, in fact, you should not use those things. And and here's why. The the slide out, um, it, it basically, it's relative to the body of the RV. So when you have the, 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 the jacks on and everything, you've generally isolated the movement of the body of the RV. But 
Not not completely, not 100%. If there's a wicked wind, if someone's moving around inside, the body of the RV can still move a little bit. A rack and pinion big slide like that, there's nothing that actually pushes the top of the slide out to, to press against and engage the slide seal. It's the literal weight of the slide. The slide's literally trying to fall out of the RV via gravity, and that is what's keeping it pressed and sealed. So if you put something under it, that prevents it from moving and the body of the RV rolls a little bit but the slide box is isolated, the top of the slide might actually kind of like weave, bend into the RV a little bit and break the seals, even temporarily. So um, you don't want to do that. You can throw things out of whack. You can damage stuff. If the RV settles on soft ground and you've got the slide jack sitting there, they'll be pushing up against the slide in a way it's not designed for. Just don't do them. Just to show you the kind of clearance that you have over here, I thought I'd actually just walk my nugget uh, under the thing, even though I'm kind of being blinded by the light right now. But if you're getting revved up like a deuce, another runner in the night, give us a call. We'll get you camping, man. And again, if you you're like, okay, this is neat, but I don't, I want four beds in the back. I don't want a camp kitchen. Check out my video on the 29 SE, and to help you do that, I'll leave you a link in the video description to check that one out, as well as. Uh, you know, a, a jump over to our website where whether you're curious or whether you're serious, you can check for pricing and availability one click away. So when you're ready, we're ready. We don't do hidden dealer fees. We just do everything else. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.